my name is Rhapsody, and welcome back to Disco Elysium. A shaggy looking girl in her late teens or early 20s kneels on the ice with an electric, uh, electronic rather contraption in her hand. As you approach, she looks up. Oh, hello there. It's cold out here, but she's not wearing a hat. She must be freezing. Dear Charles, it's freezing. Where's your hat? She looks up at you, distracted. Maybe she didn't hear you. A little louder. I said, you should have a hat on. So should you. I'm wearing a hat. I should and do point at your hat. Oh, I didn't notice that. It's nice. You should wear one too if you plan on staying outside in this weather. Yeah, well, look man, fuck the hat. She tries to think of something. What did she just say? That's not how a civilian is supposed to address an officer of the law. Is that kind of language really necessary? I'm sorry I said fuck the hat. I was concentrating on something else. My whole family swears and it rubbed off on me. There's a pained expression on her face. She'll answer your questions now. Have you seen a red-haired woman around? No, uh, let's start with the basic questions. What's your name? A cell. Her hair is dyed blonde with dark roots showing. There's a coarseness to her features. Some masculinity below that timidness. And your surname? Why? I'm from the police. It's for the paperwork. Okay, well, she hesitates. It's Berger. A very common name. You have little reason to doubt that that's her real name, but she's not all that surprised by this cop show questioning, is she? What's that device you have there? This? She breathes on her freezing fingers. It's a portable recording device. It's for film recording. Low quality, but... Still. And the wires? Actually, just one wire. I picked it when I, uh, picked on it till the braiding came loose. The wire leads to a contact microphone. What's a contact microphone? A contact mic to record sounds from inside things. Like this ice. Your mangled brain would like you to know that there is a boxer called Contact Mike. Thanks, mangled brain. Yeah? Any news on my wife's name? How about my mother's? Nope. You're welcome. Does this have anything to do with contact Mike? Uh, she's confused. Yeah, I record stuff with it. No, I mean the boxer, contact Mike. Ah, no, this is a contact microphone. It's for recording inside solid objects. Contact Mike just beats people up. You know, contact Mike doesn't just beat people up. Contact Mike is a role model. Um... An entire litany spews forth. Yes, you heard right. You should try and be more like Contact Mike, a successful athlete who has an in, uh, and an inspirational figure who's overcome social, physical, and mental obstacles. On the second thought, screw Contact Mike. He's not a champion, you are. Look at you here in front of a saggy tent, picking your nose to drug addict music. The world of sports is in awe of your faith and dedication. Yeah, you heard right. You should try and be more like Contact Mike. Man, you are one weird cop. This isn't about me. This is about your lack of respect for one of boxing's greats. And for yourself. What is it with you and that Mike guy? She pauses. The question's rhetorical. Yes! <laughs> thought gained. I figured there was probably going to be a thought at the end of that chain if I followed it down. That wasn't why I did it. But... In a little bit why I did it. Okay, if it floats your boat, I'll be more like contact Mike and less like me. Self-respect is not meant to float any boats but your own. I'll keep that in mind for future use. She turns to her tape recorder. How does that thing work? The mic? I don't exactly know. Sometimes it picks, doesn't pick up any vibrations from the air. Somehow it doesn't pick up any vibrations from the air. The box said it only picks up structure form sound. If you like techno babble, where'd you get the mic from? Same place I got the recorder from, the pal Palisium. What's the Palisium? Oh man, you haven't been to the Palisium? She forgets herself for a moment. It's the coolest place in this whole drug-addled shithole. It's a music club and a synthesizer workshop on Boogie Street in Jamrock. Musicians live there, like real musicians. I once saw Arno Van Eyck. 
thinking about it really cheers her up. It's a long way from here, though. Sounds interesting. Who's this Arno guy? Oh, yeah. She looks you over, addressing your age. Guess you wouldn't know, Van Eyck. Or really be a Palisium going kind of person. Hey! Didn't piss <laughs> and fuck the world mention Van Eyck, too? Is it like a skull thing? A uh, skull thing? She shakes her head. Man, you sound like a hundred years old when you say that. No, you don't. She's mistaken you for an old person. Say you're cool. I get down. I... I don't know what that means. I grind. I don't know what that means either. It means I'm hip beyond my years. That's cool. She breathes on her fingers. Looks like she doesn't know what to say. You're right, time has deserted me. <laughs> she looks at you oddly. Sucks, man. She squints her eyes for a second, then trying to remember something. And lets go of it. Was there something else? About the contact mic, perhaps? Actually, I have some non-mic questions for you. What are you doing out here in the cold? Recording, I guess. What is it you're recording exactly? I think I'm recording cracks in the ice. But there's no way to tell. Not without headphones. I think I just recorded your footsteps, too. Not sure how that will sound. Wait, what happened to the headphones? My boyfriend sold them. What for? I don't know, man. Things? Just stuff? You need for life? A lie. They were probably pawned off for something suspicious. And what about those recordings for... What are those recordings for, brother? The cracks, the footsteps. The musicians in the Palisim use them for making music. They loop the stuff, cut into tapes together. Then they make music out of cracks in the ice and keys jangling. Crazy sounds like that. It's hard to explain. Just nod. Anyway, I thought I'd make some too. It's supposed to be like a music place anyway. She rubs her shoulders and looks around. Uh, I don't really know what I'm doing. They use synthesizers too. I don't even have a synthesizer. She looks at the recording device. The thing she thought would fill her hours with joy and escape. It's turning out to be an empty fantasy. She feels childish, very useless all of a sudden. The sharp drop in endorphins is almost visible, like a warm blanket has fallen off her shoulders. The wave of chill, the quivering jaw, indications of a drug high. Take this, your codes. The lieutenant begins to take off his jacket. No man, fuck that, I'm cool. I'm, I'm sorry I said that, I'm sorry about the fuck. It's okay, the lieutenant backs up, he throws you a glance. <laughs> All right. Give her your hat. Here, you need this more than I do. I wish I gave her a different hat. <laughs> Thanks. She puts it on. It's a bit large for her. You said it's supposed to be a music place? What is? That. She nods towards the church. The boys think it could be a place, like the Palisium or something. Stupid, really. She pauses. It's not going to be a Palisium, that's for sure. Who are these boys? The boys? Yeah, Andre and the guys. They're inside, in the tent. And why is that? Why are you outside here while the boys are inside? Why are you freezing out here rather while the boys are inside? They got too much stuff crammed in there. No room. Stuff like what? Music stuff mostly. Like this tape recorder, but bigger. There's piles of it. You mean like those headphones your boyfriend sold? Yep, she squints her eyes a little. They were pretty. I'm sorry we sold those. Why not just leave some of it outside so you don't have to freeze? That stuff is more expensive than I am. More expensive than any of us, really. Doesn't matter. I can take the cult. And some other questions. Go ahead. Empathy. I gave her a hat. And I made her more like Contact Mike, so my empathy legendary is quite high here. Tell me about this music place you've been planning in the church. It's supposed to become like a club. For a nodic dance music. Like that new style of a synthesizer stuff they play at the Palisium. Except that... Yeah. She looks at the old church. Old wooden church up on the poles. A mean wind comes bellowing in. The six-story structure lets out a doleful creak. What is a nodic dance music? Oh, secret task is complete. You know, a nodic, cathodic, anode, cathode, obviously. Music that's made with electronic instruments. 
This is just electronic. But that's interesting to split electronical music, uh, electronical, electronic music into anodic and cathodic. Like there's two different polar opposite types of electronic music. Electronic instruments, like what? Synthesizers and tape consoles, microcomputers too. Anything that uses electricity, but isn't guitars. Also found sounds, stuff like that. You see bright, clear, beautiful, violent flashes of light. Light cutting through a smoke-filled darkness. This is what the future will look like, if it comes. If it ever comes, rather. So you want to turn the church into a club? I know. She looks towards the slopping mass, sloping rather, mass of wood on the coast, then shivers. It's not my idea. Andre and the boys found a place. It was supposed to be deserted, but now they can't even take it. Hey. Her black eyes widen. You two are cops. I don't know where you got that idea. I didn't say it. I don't know where you got that idea. Come on, man. Don't mess around. She hesitates. But not too long. This is important to her. She has the courage to ask. Maybe you guys could talk to Andre and the guys? Because there are some strange things going on in that church. If you're police, you should look into it, right? I'll talk to them. They're inside that tent there. She points to the tent. Would be cool if you did... Was there something else? Enough about the church then. I had another question. You seem surprisingly comfortable with being questioned. Why is that? Well... It's just questioning, right? You're questioning me. Is what cops do. Have you been questioned before? Once or twice, yeah. I'm sorry I haven't gotten to, haven't had the Revachol experience. They get east of the water. What's east of the river, rather? Rich people. Rich people are east of the river. Sneer. I bet they're really rich. They must be very special people to be so rich. Oh, they are. And I'm scum. I'm scum too. She nods apprehensively. So what trouble have you gotten into? With the police. The usual. I had a shitty run as a teenager. What's the usual? You know, drinking, getting into fights. The ugly stuff that happens when you move out of your parents' place at 13. In Falberg. Interesting term. Time to glean some Norwich. Wait, what is in Falberg? Is that a rhetorical question? No, I literally can't even remember the most basic terms sometimes. <laughs> the lieutenant steps in. Falberg, not in Falberg, is a massive ban uh, banlieue south of the Jamrock Quarter. It is the largest ghetto in Revachol, possibly the world. I didn't know, or rather I know j what Jamrock is, but Let's say I didn't. We're Jamrock, sort of. Matinee is called North Jamrock sometimes. Jamrock is also a ghetto, only smaller than Farberg. Jamrock is a district of Revachol comprised of the following quarters. Pox, Villa Lobos, uh, Central Jamrock, Grand Coan, Old South, and the Valley of the Dogs. The learning is great. Turns to the girl, and why did you have to move out when you were so young? My dad was a drunk, plus, Guess I wanted to be able to drink too, you know? Get my party on. I get that. I'm a major party animal myself. Major. All right. She smiles a little without meaning to. All right. I'm gonna roll the empathy roll now. The tape recorder lies on the ice like a discarded toy. Pick it up. The device is still warm from her touch and as heavy as a brick from the batteries inside. The company logo, Omicron, adorns its yellow plastic cover. Inside, the tape is rolling. The girl looks at the device in your hands. I'm sorry you have to sit here on the ice with the drugs wearing off. At your age, or at any age, in this weather, waiting for it to get dark. She looks at you in the eye, her pupils wide, surrounded by a ridiculous amount of makeup. The people who built this world intended it to be better for you, but they failed. It's easier to live in the failure than with this by your side. Tap on the tape recorder. The wind howls. She remains silent. It's real. Tell her. It's not a childish fantasy. It can be a real weapon against what's coming for you now. What is? Her shoulders shake a little. 
I'm once again reminded of how Contact Mike rose from the slums of St. Batiste to the top of the boxing world, overcoming adversity and serious brain trauma. Nothing is coming. Nothing he wouldn't knock out in three rounds. The real fight is for the right attitude. I can't believe this turned into another mic thing. Uh, fine, okay, I'll stick to it. She takes the device from you and places it in her lap. I'll knock it out in three rounds. Something changes between you now. She looks at you differently, as an equal, a fellow human being. After a moment of silence, she speaks again. So, thanks, I guess, for the psych session. Maybe I can return it. What's been eating you, officer? What's been eating me? There's nothing eating me. Uh, 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 there clearly is. Uh, there's nothing eating me. Sure, I'll say that and then she'll deny it. And then I'll have something more to talk about at that point, I imagine. Come on. I can tell. She shakes her head slowly. But okay. Be a boy there about if you want to. I guess there is something that's been making my life hell. What is? She listens intently. Ooh. So my choices are <laughs> socialist, uh, <laughs> ul like ultra liberal, uh, I think it's racist. Um, people putting their selfish interests ahead of the created good. So that's kind of like utilitarian, I guess. I think I'm going to say, I think it's the plight of the working class. Oh, really? The golem of capital runs rampant, smashing creator and slave alike. I fear the process is irreversible. Wow, social justice really matters that much to you. That's commendable. It really had shaken, <laughs> it really had you shaken up there. Are you sure that's it though? I haven't seen much of this world, but from what I've seen, social justice is an adolescent term. It sounds a bit more liberal. What's gotten me shaken up is the people struggling. It's gotten me shaken up bad. Uh, yeah, pretty sure. Now I have other questions. No, that's probably not it. Is it? Well, I mean, that is a fundamental concern of our character, but obviously, like, our character also has, like, a lot of concern about identity. Um, you know, waking up amnesiac and not knowing anything about your past uh, will probably do that to you. <laughs> But there's no, like, one essential thing that's wrong with my character. So why not define it as one of the things rather than try and say, no, that's not it, and then try and pull for a different answer that might not necessarily reflect the truth of the character as I play them. I haven't seen much of this world, but from what I've seen, social justice is an adolescent term. Sounds almost liberal. What's got me shaken up is the people's struggle, and it's got me shaping up bad. Yeah, man. They're pretty bad, she says without conviction. It makes me sick thinking about the thousands, millions, billions. How many people are there, actually? Um, how many people are in this world? 3.6 billion, not counting those on Seoul. Why wouldn't you count those on Really? That many? Reduces me to tears thinking of 3.6 billion and God knows how many more in Seoul place, crushed under the tyranny of the market. Yeah, that's pretty bad. She nods. You sure you're not just hung up on some chick, though? <laughs> hmm, perhaps. Now that you mention it, I found these letters I'd thrown into the trash. They might have something to do with it. Okay. Why do you think that? First, they had just the faintest scent of chewing gum on them. I could still smell it under the shit. Wow, man. She raises her eyebrow. That's pretty symbolic, don't you think? No, why? Used to be sweet, now it's shit. Seems pretty symbolic to me. Anyway, what else? They were written in a woman's hand, and oh boy, did reading them make me not feel good. Then there you have it. Chick trouble. Not political after all. Who was she? I don't remember. Really? She appears to believe you. You seem pretty upset about this chicka. Are you sure you don't remember anything about her? I remember her scent, and that's all. Wow, man, that's some pretty strange shit. She rubs her sides for warmth. Are you sure the letters were for you? I'm sure. 
Why would I have reacted so strongly otherwise? How come you don't remember it though? Is it like a selective memory thing? I think it's more about me getting so unbelievably drunk, I completely erased all memory of this world. Oh, yeah. Yeah, well, that might be it. This one time I did so much uh, booze that I forgot too. It's obvious she's done more than booze. Or it might be just psych bullshit. You know, Koenigstein wank. What is this Koenigstein wank? You know, the psych thing that they've got going on there. Rich people like it. People in Konigstein are mostly rich. You know, I'm not sure this has made anything better. Yeah, I'm sorry. Might be for the best to keep that shit forgotten, actually. Just my opinion. If it itches, don't scratch. Have you seen a red-haired woman around? No. Just, no? It's pretty desolate here. I only hear the dogs bark at night and see the shadows move down the coast. That's good. No neighbors to complain about noise when you get the club going. Exactly. It's our chance to turn the grim desolation into an overwhelmingly fun dance party. Actually, that's it for now. Okay. Bye. She turns her attention back to the recording device. We've got to think to think. Wompty Dompty Dom Center. You're at home, stupid cop. Not with the art crowd. You hate them. Everyone hates them. Even they hate themselves. It's nauseating. An industry built on spez retura and sparkling wine. Let's be honest. Tax evasion schemes as well. The Wompty Dompty Dom Center is the heart of this unholy symbiosis of aesthetics and tax optimization. And now that you've internalized it, you can have a piece too. Encyclopedia passives give plus 10 experience and two real, but I'm negative two suggestion. Sure. That sounds cool. Also, my understanding of the Wompty Dompty Dom Center kind of does mirror, like, uh, my understanding of uh, certain, not all, but certain galleries and... Uh, the way people will use, or the rich will use uh, those galleries to dodge tax. Alright, so I'm putting the beanie on. Lower rhetoric, but extra reaction speed. I'm fine with that. Alright, see what's going on in here. The tent is just tarpaulin fabric covering a pile of stuff. The flap is open. Inside, three young men are listening to some form of music. Sounds like nothing you've ever heard. One of them looks at you. Come on, get in and close the flap behind you. The warm stuff's getting out. It's safe to assume this is their leader. Or at least he thinks there is. Uh, he is. Squeeze in. Sorry, we barely have room for one. He points his thumb at the lieutenant. You go ahead. I'm too old for this. I'm actually not, he thinks. I just dislike delinquents. I'm sure you will feel right at home. I'll keep watch. Oh, that's, that's, that's a sass right there. I think you'll feel right at home telling me. He... He gestures for you to squeeze in. Smells like sweat and laundry detergent. Plus a trace of ether. You see a youngish man bleaching the tips of his hair with a toothbrush. He puts the toothbrush down and extends his hand in greeting. Hello, I'm Andre. It's a pleasure to meet you. Shake his hand. His grip is strong, sweaty, and warm. He's trying to project and inspire confidence. This is my posse. Noin. The young man with earrings looks at you suspiciously. An egg egg. Egg! <laughs> uh, <laughs> Sorry, I wasn't ready for that. The tape player high above his head continues to blast what is probably a nodic music. Together with a cell burger, who's out there right now, doing some seriously progressive sonic experimentation, we like to think of ourselves as music venue organizers. Wait, how many music venues have you organized? We have many in the pipeline, officer. And why are you here? You see, we've been all over Jamrock North prospecting for real estate to establish a new venue in. All assault for talent. Yeah, thank you, Egghead. And while there is no shortage of raw, unfettered talent spinning tapes in Jamrock, we've had rotten luck with the real estate part. Place is a shithole. I, I apologize for my friend Noid's potty mouth. I realize this is not how you speak to a police officer. He has authority issues. 
Uh, yeah, I, I don't need to address that, I don't think. Uh, was there something you wanted? Your friend Acel said there was a problem with the church. Oh, so you've met her. Good, good. He yeah. nods. It's a matter of occupied ecclesiastical property. I bet you've noticed the derelict hive of Narcomania on the coast. An attempt to pander to your perceived conservative sensibilities. No person his age would ever use a word like Narcomania with a straight face. Don't fall for it. Enough histrionics, what are you addicted to talking about? I'm talking about the church, and I'm not exaggerating. Even a place of spiritual refuge can become a magnet for all sorts of dope heads and burnouts if left unattended. Dope heads, burnouts. <laughs> <laughs> he angrily spits on a screw, then starts cleaning it. Well, I'm sad to say, that's exactly what happened. Sad because we were just about to put Martin A's on the map for one of the maddest dance clubs in Jamrock. Nah, strike that in Revershall. Strike that, the world. <laughs> I love it, good. And sad yet, because the dope heads and burnouts hold up in there with the worst kind. He leans back a little, watching you with a steady, serious gaze, letting you imagine just how bad those dope heads and burnouts really are. Good. This calls for an opinion. You're an expert in those. Won't stand for narcomaniacs of any kind. No narcomaniacs on my watch. Shake your head gravely. Uh-uh. Obviously not. Uh, I feel like you might be laying this on a bit thick. What's so bad about those dope heads and burnouts? They're spooky. And exactly what do you mean by spooky? I was hoping you'd be at the judge of that, officer. All I can say is, their spookiness is the kind that keeps us from restoring the church into a community center. And a place of spiritual refuge. Also, they don't heat or clean the building. Shit's gonna collapse. People just want to spin tabs without spooking it up. Place has bad signs. No one can dance like that. Thank you, AK. He turns to you. So you're gonna look into it, right? It should be a police matter. Getting them out. Whatever spooky stuff they're doing. I'm sure it's not what Ecclesiastes meant their property for. I'll make up my mind first. I have questions for you. All right, man. He claps his hands enthusiastically. With the sort of glee that's meant to imply that you've already taken the case. Uh, not in my task book. I have not taken the case, thank you. What's the status of the church? I haven't gotten inside the building yet. Ask Noid to install a measure against drifters wandering in. A padlock. It's a temporary fix. Just to contain the situation. I had to do it in a hurry. Not my best work. But it should hold for a while. What about the key? Of course. Noid, give the officer the key. I'll leave you promises to look into the spookies in the church. He stares at you gravely. Officer, I apologize. Noid doesn't always understand the joy of giving for the sake of giving. I think it might have something to do with his childhood. Damn it, take it. Don't you want to see what's in there? You can't coerce me into taking this on. I don't need the key. Well, if you ever decide to change your mind, then we're here. He taps on the wooden crate he's sitting on. Just ask me about the door again. How long have those people been locked in there? Not long. Like, a week, maybe? How can you be so sure they haven't starved to death? I'm super sure they're alive. I mean, come on. I'm at least 90, maybe 85% sure they're alive. Ha <laughs> ha! Money! Somewhere in the ruinous past that led here, there was something called exams. You may have learned the term involuntary manslaughter there. Andre, do you know what the term involuntary manslaughter means? Yeah, I do. I listen to Channel 8 all the time. I know about this crime stuff, and I assure you, officer, this is not what's happening here. I'm at least 80% sure they're alive. I mean, come on. Most people aren't ever that alive in their entire lives. Sounds like nonsense. You're right. It is nonsense. Total garbage. I know you see through it. You're one smart cop. It doesn't feel good. Or rather, it feels good to be the smart cop, doesn't it? That's a good cop to be. Has a nice ring to it. Smart cop. You wouldn't want to be stupid cop now, would you? But still, maybe he's just suckering up to you? I get by. Now, where was I with that padlock? He nods attentively, ready to answer the questions of one smart cop. All right, I can't ask for the key there. 85% is not good enough when you're dealing with another person's physical well-being. Okay? I'm sorry. I'm sorry too. I... <laughs> I'm trying real hard. 
I'm sorry too. I guess it wasn't very hardcore of us to just lock them in there like that. Alright. Uh, I want to leave this conversation. Sounds like nonsense. There we go. You can stop buttering me up now, thank you. Okay? Okay? He nods his bleaked, uh, bleached, spiked head. I won't do that anymore. Right, other questions? Sure, man. What is it you want to know? Let's do it. Uh, who exactly are the people inside the church? Truth is, I don't really know. None of us do. I don't even know where they, how many there are. All we've seen are glimpses. You haven't seen them, but you want the police involved. Well, he leans in for emphasis. There's also the machinery. The machinery is of a deeply mystical variety. When I first scouted the place back in February, it was abandoned, empty. Took some time getting the crew together. So about two weeks ago, we came up here open and set the stuff up. Suddenly there are all these strange machines lying around in there. One of them has wires running into bowls of water. Wires into water. Never seen anything like it. Andre, tell him about the feeling. Oh, it was like there was something in there with us, watching us from the dark. No, the other one. Um, which other one? I'm not as in tune with my emotions as you are, Egg. Felt like silence. Awful silence. For this man, even regular silence is awful enough. But that was something greater. But you haven't physically seen anyone? Not exactly. We've just seen someone we think is a woman go in and out of the church. A couple times. And we felt someone or something on us inside. But that's kind of it. The woman. Red hair, maybe? A lorry woman? Sure, why not? Yeah. But not really. The other one adds, Brown hair, old, heavy, dark signs. So which is it? What Noid said? Ruby's gone. The woman is someone else. You have to see for yourself these people are not reliable. That's the volition telling us that on a challenging success. Interesting. What was that about something watching you? Like, you aren't alone, you know? It wasn't quite human, if you know what I mean. Not human? As in a ghost? Do you know what he means? It was this dark shape, climbing upside down, along the ceiling, like some kind of crab man. A crab man? Yeah, you know? The way it was climbing up and around the ceiling like a crab. The other one agrees. It was stalking a cell, exhibiting ambush behavior. Odd. Crabs are usually marine creatures, not known for climbing walls. Are you sure it was a crab man? Yeah, totally. I mean, I didn't personally see it. Estelle was alone that time, but I believe her. If she comes out there saying there's a crab in there, there's a crab in there. So he hasn't even been in there lately? Is he afraid? You should talk to her about it, but be nice. Don't tell her you don't believe in the crab. There probably is no crab man. Don't let them draw you in with that nonsense. Can you tell me more about the machinery though? You should talk to Noid about that. I just got a distinct burnout and dope head sign from him. So sign is like vibe, I'm guessing. Like sign, sign wave, vibrations, vibe. Probably some, uh, probably jacked up to some stuff station too. Probably, very likely. So how can they be, uh, how can you be so sure they're burnouts and dope heads if you haven't even seen them? Well, honestly, I can't, but I am. This is a below feeble attempt at avoidance. Basically, he's attempting to weaponize idiocy. Wow, you can't, but you do. I should add weaponized idiocy to my own repertoire. Hey now, he furrows his brow. I'm 70% sure they're substance abusers. Don't let all that technology fool you. He might, uh, makes little quotation marks with his fingers around when he says technology. Where do you think the drugs come from? Where do you think drugs come from? The docks? Haven't we already solved that? Like the drug smuggling operation is happening through the docks? They're produced elsewhere and brought in through the docks. All right, let's talk about something else. 
you mentioned some ecclesiasts own the church. Who are the ecclesiasts? Oh, that's a Matoran name for the founding party. Thought it'd be cool you use it. If you don't know what the founding party is, there might be a way to mask it with minor demagoguery. This guy is very happy to lie to me. So I don't really want to rely on his information at all. Before we go on, what do you mean about Matoran? Mator, uh, Meteorin. You know, a Meteor. Concerning Meteor. Meteor? Meteor? A country? On Monday? He looks at you, squinting his eyes to see if you're kidding. On a Monday Isla. One of the poorest of the first world nations today. But once a great ancient civilization. Capital, Thalakos by Pazantic. Now humor me, Andre. What is the founding party? Come to think of it, I never really looked them up, you know? I can't give you a precise definition, but they're a very powerful religious organization. And? And they have roots in ancient mass society. He pauses. And they're the custodians of the Perikonassian church. Plus they anoint the innocent. They like made the innocentic system, no? Now, Andre, in your opinion, would this ancient religious organization who anoints the innocents want a club for anodic music in one of their churches? Totally. There isn't even a trace of doubt in his voice. The Perikonassian church is about love. Anodic music is about love. I got love from my Perikonassian posse. Love is really out of death. We dance. He violently shakes up the tape player as if to see if he can break it. Love is hardcore. Unity. Unity. Make some noise for my insulindian posse. He turns the volume up and then looks at you with a knowing nod. It's as if... <laughs> As if it's obvious, you will now break into dance. Oh man, I can't break into dance. I don't understand what you're talking about. What's a posse? Your posse is like your people, man. Like, you got your cop posse. Like, you look out for each other and you party together. That's a posse. And where is your posse, detective? That was a formidable failure as well, by the way. Nothing comes to you. The world is silent. Sounds like you're just saying random things. Love, posse, make noise. Are we? He looks at you mysteriously. Yeah. Party, party, yeah. Uh, the one with the large head really enjoys it when his friend gets mysterious. I mean, an extremely old religious institution wouldn't really want uh, a, a nodic dance party in the the halls, typically, at least. Um, and the reasoning they're giving for the possible support uh, of the ecclesiasts is complete nonsense. So no, this is too much. No sane organization would want this level of absurdity in their church. That's pretty downbeat. I think I speak for all of us when I say we expected the Lord to be more open to the idea of love, unity, and the Perikonessian posse. I don't understand a single thing you're saying. Yeah? He shrugs with melancholy. I know you don't. So, got more questions? The one with the large head is still looking at you, nodding his head, waiting for your body to start moving. His expectation is fierce. I wanted to ask you about this tent full of equipment. Yeah? What? I hate to tell you, but it reeks of sweat in here. It does, doesn't it? Told you we have a smell problem. He picks up a piece of telephone cord and inspects it. Wait, I also smell ether. Why? Ether? I don't smell ether either. I don't smell ether. Do you, Noid? Nope. It's mixed with a peculiar chemical scent, like a laundry detergent? He sniffs the air, then shrugs. It doesn't take a forensic scientist to guess it's drug-related. They look and act like the kind of guys who've done their fair share. Unlike the girl outside, however, the boy's breathing is regular and their jaws stay put and their pupils aren't dilated, so they're not under the influence currently. 
at least not under the influence of stimulants. That doesn't rule out hallucinogens, benzos, some depressants. How do you know this? Enough of this. <laughs> Logic godly. Maybe everything isn't quite as you've been told. Take a moment to analyze. You can always come ask for the church, key to the church if you change your mind, officer. Keep it cool. He winks at you. I'm going to change my clothes and we're going to have the continuation of that conversation as well as talk to a cell on the outside in the next episode. For the moment, though, my name's been Rhapsody. The name of the game has been Disco Elysium. Hopefully you've been enjoying yourselves. There's a playlist in the description down below with all of my content of the game, past, present, and future, and hopefully we'll see you next time.